Hey, welcome to lesson 2.1, Malaria and Sickle Cell Disease Demo. We are going to actually review uh, the responses to the reading and worksheet. So if you haven't watched the other video and completed that worksheet, stop the video at this point and go take care of that, and then come back and you can check your uh, responses. Otherwise, if you have that completed work or if you have some work that you will have some questions about and want to check on, this is the video that you want to watch. To use this particular resource, uh, work at your own pace. Uh, it's important that you stop and pause and rewind as often as necessary. Take notes as you're going along. Ask clarifying questions. You have your teachers, their peers, household members. Ask somebody about uh, questions that you're stuck on. Process why and how your answer might be different than what's presented. Uh, that's a really important factor so you can kind of um, address that uh, what we call cognitive dissonance, how our thinking is a little bit different when, uh, than what's presented. And then finally, explain your thinking. Again, this is a really important process in learning. It helps you kind of think through uh, what your ideas are and helps you really entrench that into, um, into your brain there. First, we're going to go over some of the background info uh, that was presented in the reading, and then we'll get into the... Um, answers because um, the, the, the reason for this is because we're going to refer back to a lot of this information. So um, the AA genotype is for healthy uh, hemoglobin. The AS genotype is the carrier of sickle cell but generally uh, is asymptomatic or does not exhibit symptoms. And then finally the SS genotype has sickle cell disease and you can see in the graphic here on the left um, in the uh, sickled cell blood cell you can see the, uh, the long rigid structures that cause the blood cell to extend its shape, uh, creating that sickle shape. On the uh, other side here, you can see the hemoglobin subunits have formed uh, a larger uh, normal healthy hemoglobin protein, which allows the red blood cell to maintain its normal shape. With that below it, you can see a blood vessel that is branching off, and you can see where those sickled cells uh, can cause a blockage in the blood flow. So malaria is caused by a parasite that is transmitted to humans by female Anopheles mosquitoes. The symptoms of malaria can be flu-like, which include chills, fever, vomiting, headaches, uh, but can also include anemia and even death. In the graphic you can see here, there is a mosquito that's landed on the skin of a human, this mosquito is infected with the parasite and it injects the parasite into the skin while it's feeding. This parasite then goes to the liver where the liver becomes infected, uh, the parasite grows in its cells, uh, and those, par those grown parasites then go to the red blood cells where the red blood cells then become, uh, become infected. The parasite continues to successfully produce more and more parasites, which then causes blood cells to rupture and uh, leaving parasites to be able to move freely in the bloodstream to infect other blood cells. So when another mosquito comes along uh, and bites the, the infected person, the blood that is infected is transferred to that mosquito, which then flies off to infect another person. That's the process and the cyclical nature of malaria. The mosquito is not actually affected by the disease, so it becomes a vector for this particular parasite. The combination of malaria and sickle cell. So you have the AA genotypes who have a higher risk of death from malaria. Folks with AS genotype carry the sickle cell disease trait, but have a lower risk of contracting uh, malaria. And then the SS genotype usually can result in an early death, uh, oftentimes not making it to the age of reproduction. The S allele frequency in malaria affected areas is about 16%. So uh, whereas compared to the US where malaria is almost completely gone, it's at 4%. So there's a much higher uh, ratio of people with the S allele frequency in malaria affected areas. So what that means is that people who have the AS genotype in areas of high malaria prevalence, they have an advantage against the malarial disease because the harmful S allele is maintained in the population of um, that high malaria environment. So we're gonna look a little bit more as to why that might be. 
the first question that you were asked was to compare these two um, these two images that compare malaria to the S allele frequency. In the graph over here, the uh, the, the map of Africa and uh, Asia, you can see that the green areas show where malaria is prevalent. The one on the right you can see is the S allele frequency. And when you compare the two, the regions overlap. You have a very strong uh, relationship between malaria and the high S allele frequency. You were then asked to create uh, or draft a prediction based off of that information. What do you think will happen to the A and S alleles as the result of the presence of malaria? Will the frequency of A increase or de uh, decrease? And then what about S? Your answers are gonna vary on this, uh, and please remember with predictions, there is no right or wrong answer uh, for these as you're basing your information off of your background. For sickle cell disease data, parent population, this is for questions 1A through B. When we look at the uh, parent population table, we need to kind of analyze and see what's going on in the chart. We can see this first column here is genotype, the number of individuals who have that particular genotype, the total population, which then provides us a frequency or a percentage. We have the allele A and S, the number of those alleles, the total parent population, and then the allele frequency. We see that there are three genotypes, AA, AS, and SS. AA has 25% frequency, AS has 50% frequency, SS has 25% frequency, which you can see in these numbers here. Finally, you have the allele frequency is 50-50. We have 50% A, 50% S. In simulation two, we have an environment that has no malaria. This is questions two C through D. We can see that in our charts from the parent population to the first generation to the second, that the A allele frequency increases from 50%, which we see right here, to 81%, which we see down here in that um, table 2.2. The S allele frequency decreases from 50% to 19%. The SS genotype may affect the survival to reproduce, so we're going to see um, a significant decrease in there. So we can see that we started off with 25% right here, and it decreases by the first generation down to zero. This leads to the decrease in the number of SS alleles in the population. The a, I'm sorry, the decrease in the number of S alleles in the population. The A alleles are more likely to survive to pass on the DNA. In the absence of malaria, there's no benefit to having the S allele. You were asked to also analyze a graph uh, with simulation two, and we had the frequency of S allele over time. The um, y-axis is the S allele's frequency, the number of generation is the x-axis, and we can see that there is a steep decline uh, of frequency from the parent generation to the first. It continues to decline, but not as rapidly from the first to the fifth generation. So the question is, um, how do, wh why isn't it at the zero? Well, part of it is that not enough time may have completely uh, passed to completely eliminate the S allele we might need several more generations for that to occur, but it is, the long-term trend indicates that that will eventually happen. In simulation two, there's no SS genotypes surviving past the second generation. So those with the AS genotypes were neither positively nor negatively affected. Uh, so they, they don't have an advantage or a disadvantage to having that particular um, genotype. So the S allele still survives by hiding in the heterozygous population. In simulation three, we see in our environment that malaria is present. This is questions E and F. The A allele frequency increases from 50% in our parent population. It goes up to 68%, but then it declines down to 61%. The S allele is at 50% of the parent population. 
it decreases down to 32%, but we see that it is uh, starting to increase by the second generation. There's still a disadvantage to having that genotype SS. It's often a fatal disease, so there is a disadvantage there, which is why we see um, our population genotype frequency of SS depleting. But having the genotype AS offers protection for malaria, which then gives it an advantage over the genotype AA or SS. When we look at the graphs here, it's asking us in question G to compare simulations two and three. In simulation two, you can see the AA genotypes increased in frequency while the AS genotypes decreased. The SS individuals don't survive. In simulation three, the AA genotypes increase but then decrease slightly from the starting amount, and then the AS genotypes go up steadily. And again, the SS genotype individuals do not survive. In the analysis for question H, it's asking us to predict what could happen for simulation three. It's possible that the S allele frequency will most likely stabilize somewhere between 30 and 50%. Uh, higher than the S allele frequency in the areas without malaria. If we have too many S alleles, we're going to have more individuals with the SS genotype, uh, and their survival rate is very low. If we have too few S alleles, however, we have more individuals who are susceptible to malaria, which can be a fatal disease. Okay, so the last step here is to take what you've learned in those responses and compare your original predictions to the data that we've gone over. Is your prediction supported by that data? Do the data go against your predictions? And explain how they either support or go against those predictions. Remember predictions and the revelation of the data is not a matter of being right or wrong. It's about what we learn from the data and how our knowledge evolves as a result of that. Really appreciate your time going through this. If you have any questions or need clarification, seek out your teacher. Thank you so much for all of your hard work and take time to have a wonderful day.